Gimbals are a great tool for getting dynamic shots where you get really smooth and stable footage. And you can also get some really unique shots with a lot of the features that they offer now. And I've been using gimbals for years, but mostly on planned shoots like my short films because they're not that easy to pack and bring along with you. Setup takes time. And the bigger your setup gets with a larger camera, bigger lenses, better microphones, all that is gonna add more weight. And you have to get even larger gimbals that can hold that. And I travel a lot and I don't typically bring a gimbal with me because of those reasons of inconvenience with them being heavy, hard to pack, hard to carry, setup time, and all that that goes into it. Well, that is until Zion sent me their Weeble 3S gimbal to try out. And I must say, this thing is a game changer. I just got back from a trip to Italy with my wife and I was able to easily carry and use this gimbal while traveling. And this is smaller than gimbals I've had in the past, which I've never really tried out because small gimbals typically have a small payload capacity. With my camera, I have the FX3 with the Sony 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8 lens that I typically take everywhere with me. And that setup's pushing four pounds. When it comes to those limits, Zion doesn't have a weight payload limit listed, but they do say that the maximum compatible setup is a Nikon D850 with a Sigma 24 to 70 F2.8 lens. When I looked all that up, it comes out to about 4.25 pounds. There's also a list of compatible cameras and lens combinations that you can check out to make sure that your setup is compatible before buying it. And after seeing all the features that I show you get with this gimbal, if you do decide to buy, I have links down in the description that won't cost you anything extra, but will greatly help out the channel. And now before we went out into the city in Italy, I went ahead and balanced it so it would be ready to go for the day and then locked each axis before strapping it to my bag to carry around. And that's one of the features I really enjoyed because with my older gimbals, I couldn't lock any of the arms. And so it wasn't really easy to carry them around without finding some way to try to secure all the arms from swinging around. And going from the bag being behind my back to pulling out my camera, unstrapping the gimbal from my bag and setting everything up took just under two minutes. And I'm sure after using it more, I could definitely get that time down lower, but it really doesn't take that long to set up if you've already balanced it ahead of time. And one of the things I do like to do when traveling is to make time lapses of famous places. And here, I wanted to get a time lapse of St. Mark's Square in Venice using one second exposures so that people would look blurry as they walk by. And rather than just having a static shot like I would typically get with my Gorillapod that I carry, the gimbal allowed me to set start and end points so that I could have a moving time lapse, which opens up all kinds of new possibilities for the type of time lapses I can get in the future. There are multiple ways to do this, with one of them simply being to set multiple control points but the gimbal also has a time-lapse mode where you can program what your exposure time will be and how long between each shot. And that way the gimbal will only move in between shots so that your pictures won't look blurry from it starting one second exposure and then the gimbal moving a little bit to the next control point. And if you're not controlling the camera through the gimbal, then you do need to make sure that you time it just right with starting your pictures on the camera at the same time that the camera starts its time-lapse program so that it moves in sync with when your camera's taking pictures. You can access these features easily through the Zion Play app, as well as being able to control your gimbal remotely through the app. The joystick button allows controlling of the panning and tilting functions of the camera, while the curve button above that allows for a roll motion control of the gimbal. And all of this opens up a lot of possibilities for me in the future with travel filmmaking because I have a gimbal that's small enough that I can strap to a bag, take out on day trips, it's not gonna hinder me from going out and doing stuff and it's easy to set up and take down. So if you have any questions about the gimbal, post them down in the comments and I'll try to help you out the best I can there. So let's take a look now at the functional modes of the gimbal so you can see what you can expect as well well as limitations to keep in mind when you're using it. The most important thing is to make sure that you balance it correctly before using it. A gimbal will perform best when the motors aren't having to work harder than they need to to stabilize the camera. And this is where the main limitation is that I found with the gimbal. When I've used my larger gimbals in the past with this zoom lens, I could just balance it with the zoom in the mid range around 35 to 40 millimeters. And the motors could handle it when I'd zoom into 70 millimeters or zoom out to 24 just fine. I used to do this all the time when I shot weddings and I had my camera and my 24 to 70 f2.8 lens on there pretty much 90% of the day, but not so much with this gimbal. You can use a zoom lens with it, so I don't need to take multiple lenses with me when I travel, but when you balance it, you need to make sure that you balance it at the focal length that you're going to be using. And if you wanna use a different focal length, then you need to make sure that you rebalance the gimbal at that new focal length so that it'll perform properly, since you're likely already pushing close to the maximum payload capacity of the gimbal with that large lens. You can see here in this shot where I zoomed in some after balancing that the footage was looking jittery, even though it 
looked like everything was working fine while I was filming. I didn't really notice it until I played it back after we did the shot, and so I zoomed out and found that there was still some jitteriness, but it wasn't quite as bad. So what I found made the gimbal work best is to go to the motor section in the menu after properly balancing it and letting it auto-tune the motors for that setup with it balanced at that focal length. And while it's doing its auto-tune, you'll see that the gimbal is shaking the camera a little bit in each axis from the roll, pan, and tilt, and then give you an indication when it's complete. And after that, it worked perfectly with nice stable footage at that focal length where I balanced it. So my tip is if you're using it, make sure you balance it properly at whatever focal length you're gonna use, do an auto-tune, and then you're good to go. And the auto-tune only takes like 10 seconds. It's not a big deal. You can put a shotgun mic on the camera, but you won't be able to balance it properly because the smaller gimbal arms won't allow it to tilt all the way up, and so you can't balance it properly in each axis. You can throw your mic on after balancing if the load isn't too heavy already. Do an auto-tune and make sure that the footage doesn't look jittery, and be aware that you won't get full range of motion when using it with a microphone on top. And the main mode you'll be in when you start the gimbal is the pan follow mode. And this is a setting I use most often often when following someone around. As you turn left or right, the camera will follow, but tilting changes have to be made with the joystick. And then when you push the mode button, you go into the locked mode where the camera does not follow any of the movement of the gimbal. So it stays in place regardless of where the gimbal is. And the only way to control camera movement in this setting is with the joystick. And I'll typically use this type of setting for shots moving maybe from low to high or vice versa while moving straight so the camera doesn't do any panning if I'm accidentally moving left or right a little bit. Push the mode button again and that takes you to the follow mode Mode that makes the camera follow you in both the pan and tilt movements. I use this type of shot if I know I'm going to be intentionally making a deliberate tilting movement that'll be much smoother in this setting than if I was trying to use the joystick. Double click the mode button and then you'll go into the POV mode which makes the camera follow all the movement in pan, tilt, and roll modes. And there aren't a lot of times I'd really see myself using this mode unless maybe it was a scene of someone feeling disoriented and you want to enhance that feeling for the viewer. Another double click takes you to the vortex mode Mode, which turns the camera straight up and then allows you to make a rolling shot that's becoming more common. I'm starting to see a lot more in films. I was wondering if the gimbal would be able to support my camera and the lens using this mode, but again, it had no problem once everything was properly balanced and calibrated. If the camera's off axis, you can double click the trigger on the front to recenter the camera. And then if you do a triple click on that trigger, it'll put the gimbal into selfie mode, which I don't see myself ever really using because it would get heavy pretty quickly when holding it out like that to vlog. And speaking of holding the camera there's an extendable grip attachment that I really like even though this is a smaller gimbal it comes with a tripod attachment on the bottom and you can hold that with your other hand so you can use it with both hands without this attachment but with this attachment having that handle next to you if you're doing lower sling type shots that really helps with keeping it stable with two hands as well as the adjustable palm rest that's on the right side of it you can move it up or down just right and that helps support the weight of the gimbal if you're using it in one hand there are a lot of other features with scroll wheels that you can set up for following focus and things like that but personally I typically just rely on the autofocus because I'm usually a one-man show and one neat feature is that the gimbal has a built-in light that's adjustable in brightness as well as color temperature from 2600 to 5500 Kelvin and this isn't something that I'd use on a planned shoot but I definitely could see it coming in handy for live shoots where you don't have as much control over lighting another thing I really like is that the batteries are built in now and rechargeable through a USB-C port on the handle because I remember my first gimbal years ago was the Zion crane and it had massive batteries that you had to move from the handle and recharge, which made it not as easy to recharge. I mean, you had to buy extras where now, if you have a battery pack, you could hook that thing up and hold it while you're using the gimbal to keep it charged. But the battery on this thing is shown to last over 11 hours, which I doubt you'll really use because once you start using this thing for a while, carrying it around, it will make you more tired because you're using the gimbal, a large camera load on it, and you'll start to feel it in your arms and your back. And so between setting it down for breaks and also putting it into sleep mode, which is another feature you have, you can hold down the mode button to put the gimbal into sleep mode to save battery power between takes so it's not just constantly on and then you hold down the button again to quickly take it back out of the sleep mode and you're ready to shoot and those are the ways that I typically use gimbals and what you can expect if you decide to go with the Weeble 3s this was really surprising how well it worked for how small it was and I was really happy especially with how easy it was to pack and bring with me for an international vacation you can get the version without the extended grip for $320 or the full setup that I'm using for $440 which 
which in my opinion is definitely worth it because the fatigue does start to set in after a while and having that palm rest and the extra handle does definitely help. But if you do have any questions about this gimbal or gimbals in general, different types of shots, filmmaking, whatever, post them down in the comments and I will try to help you out the best you can. Hit that like button if this video is helpful. Check out the channel. I have tons of videos on there helping you out with learning how to use things like gimbals, tripods, monopods, learning framing, lighting, all the basics of your camera to help you learn how to go from knowing nothing to getting really awesome footage that you can even make money with. So if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe. Lots more to come and I'll see you in the next one.